Welcome and good evening, everyone. Um, sorry, we had a technical glitch, so we've uh, started a couple of minutes late, but um, thanks for staying with us and joining us for this evening's webinar, uh, which is the sixth and penultimate installment in our seven part series on how to improve your child's reading. Tonight's session is proudly brought to you by Kibbooks.online, a new digital online reading platform for children and in association with EduBlocks, our partner and leaders in specialized reading and mathematics services. Tonight, we look at comprehension strategies and the three steps to deepen understanding. I'm your host, Chris Beer, and uh, like you, I'm really looking forward to hearing from tonight's special guest, Dr. VP Vol, who has been involved in the higher education space for almost 20 years and currently serves as the Director of Student Life at the University of Free State a position is occupied since 2016. This session is sure to be of great benefit as we continue with our journey to help improve the overall reading and comprehension abilities of our children. Before we kick off tonight's proceedings, um, a few general announcements. If you've missed any of our previous sessions, uh, don't worry, you'll find them all on our webinar link at www.qualibooks.co.za. Simply click on the webinars tab and access them from there. This evening's session will also be recorded and made available from our website within 24 hours after this event. Our final session in the series will be brought to you on Thursday, the 4th of August, same time, same place. Uh, you will, as a, you, we won't have a question and answer session this evening, however, feel free to drop any related questions you may have into the chat box, and with time allowing, we'll answer them at the end of tonight's webinar. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and stay up to date with everything we are currently busy with. During the session, we will post the relevant links and information into the chat box. And uh, as always, you don't go away empty handed. There will be some takeaways up for grabs exclusively on offer to you as our loyal participants. And details of these will be made available at the end of the session. So be sure to stay with us throughout. Kibbooks.online, you've seen the loops. And our mandate with Kibbooks is to help develop a reading culture amongst our children. It was created with a unique vision. Rather than following a formula and creating something in accordance with a mechanically followed rule or style, we wanted to turn a traditional model on its head and create a digital reading platform that is exciting, original, creative, and captive. The platform is it's, it's, it's not a library as such. Um, instead, it offers unlimited access to thousands of top quality books, which are bright, colorful, interesting with compelling content to be accessed and enjoyed anywhere and at any time. Therefore, children no longer need to rely on the limited access within the context of the school environment. It means they can have 24 hour access, 24 seven access to be in the comfort of their own home, at a friend's place, the local library, or even better when they're away on holiday. The platform also caters to all 11 South African languages and most importantly, it is data free. For more, on this, visit the platform at www.kibooks.online and explore our world of books by clicking on the demo login button or watch the video tutorial for more details or simply email us at info at qualibooks.co.za. For the best navigation experience, download the app from the Google Play Store or App Store. This information will also be posted into the, uh, the, the chat box. Now folks, without further ado, joining me tonight all the way from Cape Town, is EduBlox's Hanli Bronner. Hanli, good evening, welcome, and over to you. Good evening, Chris, thank you very much. I'm Hanli Bronner, as you said, from uh, I'm EduBlox Programs Manager and also the owner of EduBlox Durban World Franchise. I'm delighted to welcome our speaker for the evening, Dr. VP Wall, who is a valued EduBlox strategic partner in the field of cognitive education. Dr. Val is the Editor-in-Chief of the Journal for Cognitive Education and Psychology, and is currently serving his second term as the Vice President in Africa for the International Association of Cognitive Education and Psychology. Finally, he is also co-founder of the Institute for the Advancement of Cognitive Education. Dr. Val, we look forward to your presentation this evening. So over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Hanali. Um, it's certainly very exciting and a privilege to uh, to present to you. While I share my screen, um, uh, coincidentally, I can share with you that um, that I'm presenting from the University of the Free States Library, 
and um, we've got load shedding in Bloemfontein and uh, so I had to arrange with uh, with my university to share conference room here but certainly um, I think reading is one of the most important skills cognitive skills that one can teach a child and certain any human being and it's so intimately connected with cognition that I am always excited uh, to present about reading and tonight reading comprehension. So I've titled my presentation tonight, A Mediated Approach to Reading Comprehension. Uh, comprehension. And I specifically want to emphasize at the beginning the mediated aspect of reading comprehension. That implies a relational approach to reading comprehension. I think if there's one slogan that I could attach to my academic work and my academic mission, and uh, that would be to put um, knowledge back in the context of relationships. And hopefully you will pick that up, that um, I believe that that reading development and specifically reading comprehension is closely connected with the bidirectional relationship between a parent and a child or between a teacher and a child. So to begin with, I um, would like to just highlight that there are two crucial components to reading. The one is decoding, and decoding has to do with word recognition, uh, with understanding sentences, with fluency in reading. And, um, and I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on the second part uh, illustrated by the vertical, the y-axis on, uh, on your screen, and that is a reading comprehension. So in other words, to, um, to create a deep cognitive, uh, to, ex to um, actually enable the, the deep cognitive processes associated with reading um, and, um, and to unlock that. Uh, so oftentimes when we talk about reading comprehension, we only focus on the decoding aspect and my presentation tonight will focus on, on the comprehension aspect of it. So you will see that um, the, the orange block on your screen actually illustrates that, that we want to end up in the top right corner um, uh, where we've got high comprehension and high decoding. It's suboptimal when we've got low comprehension and high decoding or the other way around. We want to have both high comprehension and high decoding. So, um, so that's the aim and that's where we, where we are aiming at, uh, but tonight's presentation will only focus on the comprehension aspect. So um, I want to press fast forward. If I can just sort of summarize the place where we are currently at in relation to research uh, regarding reading, it could be summarized in, in a one double-barreled word, and that is meaning-making. So, so for the past 100, 150 years, uh, many research developed about reading, um, but where we are currently at academically and in terms of research, it's all about meaning-making. And that actually differentiates then uh, what is the difference between proficient uh, readers and, um, and readers who lack uh, proficiency in, uh, in reading. So we know from research and from the body of literature that proficient le uh, readers um, expect that the text will make sense. Uh, in other words, they, when they engage a text, they read with purpose. Um, um, the material is integrated with previous knowledge and they integrated the different aspects of the text with one another and they've got a range of strategies and skills that they draw from to actually help them to, um, to achieve the purpose. And I think this beautifully links with a, with a previous webinar that was presented by Key Books on, on reading strategies. So that's uh, proficient learners. So the lack of proficiency is then marked by low expectations from learners. Um, uh, readers only read to decode um, the words trying to make sense in a fragmented or a disconnected way and they obviously lack uh, the necessary strategies and skills uh, to make meaning of what they read. In a certain sense this is good news for us because um, as a cognitive educator or somebody that, that um, a focus in my academic work on cognitive education. Um, we focus a lot on thinking strategies and learning strategies simply because we know we can teach the brain to operate better. So just as we can teach, a, 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 let's say, a javelin thrower with the right techniques, we can teach a javelin thrower to throw the javelin much further if he or she has got the right techniques. In the same way, we can teach the brain with the right kind of techniques to 
op to operate much more um, than what it um, um, uh, sometimes um, can operate on. So in other words, when we talk about strategies and skills, especially in relation to reading um, comprehension, it means that um, we can teach that to children. So um, before I go on, I think it's crucial for us to understand that meaning making, which cl is closely connected with uh, reading comprehension, actually derives, it comes from the bidirectional interaction between a reader and the text. So that reciprocity between the reader and the text um, actually qualifies the quality of the comprehension that springs forth. So the better the interaction between the learner and the text, the better the comprehension, the poorer or when there's a breakdown in the interaction between uh, the learner and the text, the comprehension is suboptimal. And that's where we want to focus our strategy and our intervention on is on that quality interaction between the reader and the text. So the question is then, how do we move from a suboptimal interaction between reader and text or where there's a breakdown uh, or insufficient interaction between the reader and the text. How do we move from that position on top of your screen to the bottom where there's sufficient and effective interaction between the reader and the text? And that's where um, the strategy of mediation comes in. You'll see the little uh, figure or human figure in between the reader and the text. And that's um, that the approach is what we called mediated uh, learning uh, or mediated um, in this regard uh, reading comprehension and that is simply where you put a human being in the middle of the process of interaction and the process actually flows through the mediator to enhance the interaction between the reader and the text so this comes from the theory um, created by um, Reuven Feuerstein. He's a cognitive sci uh, scientist that um, studied under Jean Piaget. For those of you who come from an educational background, um, his work spanned seven, eight decades, uh, sorry, seven decades. He passed, sadly passed away in 2014. But his whole approach to learning was a mediated approach. And simply put, it is, um, he said that, um, that learners that are exposed to good mediation through parents or through teachers um, develop in themselves the ability to gain from a direct learning experience. So, but a child in and of him, himself or herself cannot gain from a direct learning experience. You need a sufficient amount of mediation and or mediated learning experience to develop the cognitive hooks, if I can use the metaphor, so that when you are exposed to a direct learning experience, it will hook and it will stay. So therefore, um, um, he worked with um, brain injured ch children, children coming from a Holocaust, um, et cetera, et cetera, later ADHD and autistic children. And he very, very successfully applied the notion of mediation, of putting a me human mediator between the stimulus, the organism, which is the child or the developing person, and the response on the other side to put, put the H, the human mediator, in between and to enhance that interaction process. Um, and he had a phenomenal success. Um, IQ scores that changed went against the grain of cognitive science in his time and um, established significant uh, success in that regard. So um, that is my approach and my suggestion on how to enhance um, uh, the uh, reading comprehension. Uh, there are 12 mediated learning parameters that Ruben Feuerstein established in his time. Um, we're only going to focus on the, the first three. And the reason why I chose the first three is that we know in a mediated learning experience, the first three is the most essential. It's crucial that all three must be present in every learning experience, not only in a reading experience, but also in a classroom situation or casual interaction between yourself and, and the child um, that you are developing. So we're going to focus on the three, first three mediated learning parameters. And I'm going to show you very practically um, how to use these three learning parameters in the interaction between yourself um, and the child to enhance the interaction between the child and the text. So the first uh, mediated learning parameter is what we call intentionality and reciprocity. Intentionality and reciprocity. And as you can hear from the title, there are two sides to this um, 
uh, to this parameter. The first one is a focused interaction or what we call inten intentionality. And this simply happens when the teacher or the lecturer or the parent um, takes um, uh, on purpose a specific direction in the learning interaction. And this is done through focusing the attention of the learner or the child on something specifically uh, in the environment. So many things happening around the child, but for now, I want you to focus on this specifically. And it's almost as if you put a metaphorical magnifying glass on one specific stimulus in the book or in the environment, and you bring that into focus of the learner. So that's intentionality. So the teacher or the parent actually changes what is present in the environment to stand out, to bring it into focus, to make it different from the other things in the book or in the environment. And in a certain sense, um, I am reaching inside myself um, to, to, to take out what I know the child should see or should hear or should focus on. I dig in, I take it out, that intention in, inside, I focus the intention of the child on that and I verbalize it or I make it explicit by saying, I want you to see this, therefore I'm pointing with my finger. I want you to hear this. Uh, therefore, I'm saying it out louder. I want you to understand this. Therefore, we're going to read this book. So you take your implicit intention and you make it explicit. So that's the first step of mediation. And hopefully you can see how you interject yourself in that interaction between the child and the text as the human mediator inside. This is a technique, the first technique that you use to enhance the reciprocity, the bidirectional interaction in, between the child and the text. The second aspect of the first parameter is what we call reciprocity or a continuous response. And this happens when the child gives you an indication that he or she has taken your hand in the learning process. This is so crucial. Otherwise, you're just going on a sort of a metaphorical walk. If the child is not taking your hand, the learning is not going anywhere and the process stops there. So the child needs to give you a sign a hint, an indication that he or she has taken your hand in the process. So sometimes it's a smile, sometimes it's a facial expression, sometimes it's a question, sometimes it's just eyes lightening up, but you need to get that response indicating that they've taken uh, your hand. What's crucial here, um, and this is directly applicable to a learning situation or a reading situation rather, is to create a safe space. Um, it's important to to, uh, for smaller children to put the child on your lap, or to create a cozy atmosphere, a nice atmosphere. And because of the ambiance, the environment that is conducive, the child re reciprocates by uh, taking your hand in the learning process. So you can uh, incorporate intentionality and uh, reciprocity in three ways. You can change yourself as a mediator. You can change your body language. You can change your own language. You can change your tone of voice. For instance, I want you to listen carefully. Therefore, I'm saying the softer. Or you can say it louder. You can use gestures like I'm doing with my hands this evening. So that's one, one angle that you can take. Another angle that you can take is that you can focus on the learner. In other words, what are the interests of the learner? What are the the needs of the learner. Um, in, in other words, I know my, um, I grew up in a home of a psychologist and, um, and I know specifically one child once came to him. Um, the parents were, were, they didn't have any answers how to establish a love of reading. And his advice was simply, you know, just what are the interests of the child? Go to the library and take out books that match the interest of the child. So that's a very good way of um, in intentionality and reciprocity. Or you can change the stimulus. You can make it larger. You can repeat it. You can make it smaller and so on and so forth in a class situation. So you can see the reciprocal loop there illustrated. I'm not going to um, focus too much on that. I want to focus on some practical examples in key books. So I went onto the website. Um, Chris, well done. I think it's a fascinating uh, website and resources that you are availing um, uh, to people. So well done with that. 
Um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I chose one book on grade uh, seven uh, called Top Hunters. Uh, you'll find it there. And I worked with what's inside the book to illustrate to you how you can incorporate intentionality and reciprocity in, uh, um, a, in a reading experience for children. So uh, in, uh, in the front of the book, uh, before you're reading, I picked up immediately that, um, that in the books are already um, nudges towards intentionality and reciprocity. So those would be questions like, do you know what these words mean? Um, ask your child to look out for these words in the book and look up the meanings uh, um, of any of these words. And there are the words, I think it's a wonderful nudge towards intentionality and reciprocity. Look at the cover and read the title together. Ask your child, what do you think the shark is doing? And so on and so forth excellent strategies to enhance intentionality and reciprocity. And what do you hope to find out in the pages of the book? In other words, you create the expectation uh, to, to invoke a response uh, from the child in their learning experience. So I just found, find these aspects in front of the book, um, you know, very helpful to enhance uh, the first parameter of, um, of um, uh, mediated learning. And again, these parameters are crucial to help you as a human mediator to enhance that interaction between the child and the text. Additional tips that you can use on the first parameter is to create a positive atmosphere. I've, I have spoken about it, create that wonderful warm ambiance uh, to um, invoke a response from your child, to create expectations, asking them, what do you think is this book going to be all about? You know, why, um, you know, why do you think that the, the author placed this particular picture in front on the, on the cover? And, um, and so create expectations, couple it with identity. Oftentimes we told our own children, readers are leaders. And they just like that because, you know, they wanted to be um, uh, learners, but, but it's an effective way to change behavior, to couple a specific behavior to a kind of identity that your child associates with. And create a rhythm of reading. Um, like say every Friday evening or every evening, mom will read to you out of the book three pages and you read one and then we read two together. Something like that. That's something that we did with our children right at the beginning. But every evening you do the same or every weekend or every Wednesday you go to the library, establish a rhythm uh, of reading. Um, so uh, it's very effective to establish those rituals or rhythms to establish the kind of behavior uh, that you want. The second parameter um, is called the mediation of transcendence. So think, close your eyes and see in your mind's eye a bridge, right? The mediation of transcendence. So this happens when the teacher or the parent builds a metaphorical bridge from the immediate learning experience, the year and the now to a different place or a different situation by simply asking the question, what is this lesson or what are we learning all about? And in that regard, what you try to do, you ident try to identify the core concept or the core rule or the core strategy, what that learning text is all about. Number one, you identify the core principle in that. And once you've got that, you bridge it to different contexts and different situations. And, and this is so crucial to convey to students that the world is an integrated whole. Otherwise, um, children that function suboptimally in terms of cognition thinks in compartments. They think the world uh, exists in disconnected ways. But learners that are well-developed cognitively understand that the world is an integrated whole and you can bring that in in the way in which you facilitate the reading experience. So once you've identified the core principle um, in that text, you can ask the question, where else can we use this or where else have we seen this and so on and so forth. So you build a metaphorical bridge. So there's an illustration of how you identify the rule or the principle and how you bridge it to different contexts and please bring it back then to the here and the now. Good questions uh, already um, in, in the key books on that book uh, on predators, uh, grade seven, what do you already know about animals? Uh, that hunt, very good question, uh, mediation of transcendence, and what school, skills do you think animals need to catch and eat other animals? I think it can be um, expanded upon. I've put in two more questions that might be thought-provoking. If animals that eat meat use special skills, that's the core principles, do you think animals that eat other kinds of food do also need special skills to get their food? 
So where else have you seen other animals use specific skills to get food like herbivores and so on? Or if animals need special skills to get food, do you think humans also need special skills to get food? Uh, what skill, what kind of skills do we as humans need uh, to get food? And of course, that can uh, co um, result in a very interesting uh, conversation. Right. So um, moving on uh, then to the third parameter, uh, the mediation of meaning. Um, think uh, metaphorically of a key in a lock that unlocks and open a door. So it occurs when the teacher or the parent unlocks the importance of a learning experience, asking the question, why is this important? Why is this activity? Why should we do it? And um, it is the key to understand the importance of a specific lesson. So um, it links up uh, in that conversation with cultural values, why something is important, and it also unlocks the motivation why um, students need to know about certain things. Uh, it brings in the, also the search for a personal meaning in life. So this is just the illustration of um, the, how the motivational, the affective side of learning is so crucial, and in the mediation of meaning, this is incorporated. So there's again uh, a picture from key books and um, uh, just with an illustration, sort of a summary of why do these hunters uh, catch food? And I just thought if, um, if uh, this was my child and, and I would have engaged as a human mediator to enhance this learning experience, I would have asked two, um, possibly two questions. The one would be, why do you think this is important that we know that special skills are required uh, to gather food? And, um, and then, of course, this can, can open up a, a wonderful conversation. Or um, why do you think it is important to understand that different animals eat different kinds of food? And, and this uh, question can link up with the whole notion of an ecosystem and the value of looking after the whole earth. Um, because if we take one species out, you know, it disrupts the ecosystem. And that is why we need to understand that different animals eat different kinds of foods. And all of this is connected with, uh, with one another. And so in this aspect or this part of the conversation, um, you unlock uh, the value system that you also want to convey uh, to the child. So the mediation of intentionality and reciprocity, the magnifying glass until the child is taking your hand, the mediation of transcendence, building the bridge, and the mediation of meaning, unlocking the importance um, and the value system uh, to the child. So um, that is it from my side. Hopefully that uh, the three uh, core skills will help you to enhance um, the, the interaction between your child and the text and enhance uh, the comprehension or the cognitive processes associated um, with, uh, with a deep understanding of the text. Um, if you want to contact me, there is my email address and my cell phone number. And um, I do from time to time, I do some consultancy work, especially on the design of learning experiences and learning environments. And from time to time, upon request, I do in-depth training on uh, cognitive processes and uh, especially social cultural learning. So that is it from my side. Hopefully you found it insightful. Thank you very much. Dr. Vol, uh, please just stay, don't, um, um, don't kill your screen. Uh, I think this was incredibly insightful. I've, I've jotted down a whole bunch of things over here. Um, and I think you're gonna be flooded. Your email is gonna be flooded with uh, people wanting to make appointments with you because I think this is incredibly important to link, um, as you say, that mediator, the role of the mediator can't be understated more. And uh, it's, it's, it, it's such a necessary tool. So it needs to be given the light of day and, and what an important role it plays. And uh, with the, the tools that you've clearly got um, to, to enable that, um, it's, it's, it's things that I think everybody, parents, teachers, facilitators, um, should get involved with to upskill ourselves to become better tutors and, and better mentors to, to our kids and, uh, and helping them unlock their potential. So I'm going to ask you to stay on because there's a couple of notes that we've made. Hanley, if I can ask you to join us, um, if you don't mind, um, we've made Hi. a few notes and... Uh, just to pose a few, there's a couple of questions and I'm going to ask Hanley to, to lead, if you don't mind, uh, Dr. Wall, if you don't mind responding and colouring in the, uh, the, the, the lines for us. Hanley, if you don't mind, um, back to you. Yes, thank you, Chris. Vipia, just three questions for you. 
The first one, we've, we've now looked at the three MLE parameters. Can you expand on some of the other parameters and how that could help with reading comprehension? Okay, so, so I briefly showed the, um, the picture uh, of the 12 MLE parameters. So, of course, the first three that we briefly touched on uh, tonight is um, those parameters that are fundamental to any learning experiences. And then we've got um, six parameters that, that we call a situation or context-specific parameters. So that is when the situation arises, you can focus on that. And then we've got three parameters that actually focus more on the value system and sort of the, the environment around it. So maybe I should choose one from the context-specific parameters and then one from the environmental um, cultural um, parameters. So the one that I think might be um, you know, most appropriate appropriate is the mediation of challenge um, and the search for novelty and complexity, the mediation of challenge, the search for novelty and complexity. And that is really when you teach a learner um, that uh, don't take the easy way out, um, you know, um, go for the mountain, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so in that regard, that you as a human mediator interject in the process and you tease out not just to stick with the text and to accept what is in the text, but to engage the text deeper and to think deeply about the text. And, and I would love, I, I wish I had time to talk about the development of critical thinking skills, but that's where you, where you bring in critical thinking skills questions to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And mm -hmm. what you do, you teach the child not to accept what's just in the text but to engage critically with the text and uh, for that search for novelty and and complexity if i have to choose maybe a, a parameter on establishing a culture a learning culture the mediation of an awareness of the human being as a changing entity is i think very important so that's where we teach the child that you're not stuck where you are you've got the potential it's a focus on the potential and the ability of people to develop cognitively and this is so important also for low functioning children that that sometimes believe they can't and in the engagement and in engaging the text, you can convey to them that, listen, you are a changing entity and your brain is amazing. Your brain has got the capacity to form new neurological connections and to grow and to develop. And your brain can do that. And, and once you engage the text, um, it's important to convey to the child, but you've done that, right? And to own that success and to, um, mm. and to convey to them that they are a changing entity and they can grow and develop. I think those two parameters might be crucial in my mind to, to enhance learning, uh, reading comprehension. Thank you, Pippa. I wish we could listen to all of them. Um, so you've got us lots of good strategies and we focused a lot on the parents and how they can uh, mediate reading for understanding at home. Do you have any idea, ideas for teachers? Because teachers often have very large classes. How do you actually achieve the same goal in a classroom? Yeah. And I, and I really feel for teachers because I think that's one of the huge challenges that we face um, in our education system currently. It's just large classes. Um, I'm a firm believer of creating uh, communities of learning. And, um, and in fact, much of my work at the university currently involves creating uh, communities of learning uh, um, uh, outside the, the, the curriculum. Um, and, um, and I do think that's a specific strategy that schools and teachers are not using optimally currently, how to create learning communities, how to create smaller groupings in a big classroom of communities of learning and how, um, so there are different aspects to it, but how do you do that? How to create social solidarity and interconnectedness um, amongst children? How do you use stronger children to help other children? How do you activate uh, the mediation of peer learning in those groups? So I think the social cultural aspects of learning is something that we can access much more intentionally uh, in large classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Just one more question. Why is reading and comprehension development from a very young age so important for cognitive development? Okay, sure. Um, well, I, I mean, I wish all parents would, um, would understand the importance of reading and how closely connected is language development uh, to cognition. 
So mm. if you go, if you understand from a cognitive um, 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 science perspective, the link between language and cognition, you'll understand how important it is, number one, to establish a love of reading for your children from very small and, and, and then also to engage children, um, you know, in that interaction uh, with the text. So in, in cognitive um, education, we talk about um, verbal handles. That's the, sort of the common, common word for it. So uh, you, you can't, um, I've got my cell phone here and, and I can handle it because I can feel it, right? And I can label it. I can put a label on it. Right, but but the same with concepts in our brain. If you can't label it, if you can't label a concept, you can't work cognitively with with this concept in your mind. You can't take it in, you can't process it, and you can't give output on it. Uh, you have to put a label on it and define it, and that has all that has got to do with language, right? And you develop language through reading and reading for your child and encourage your child to read. And, and so thinking patterns and thinking strategies is closely connected uh, with, uh, with language development. So, so, I mean, cognitively, it's, it's crucial, but also uh, to read from a young age to establish that love of reading because it does not come naturally. You have to nurture it and you have to foster it continuously. Thank you. Such a massive message that we've received this evening. Thank you very much, Vipia. We appreciate it. Um, I think this is the end of the question, so I'm going to hand back to Chris. Thanks, uh, <clears throat> Anneli. Thanks, uh, uh, Dr. Wall. I could sit here and listen to you all night, and I think the, the people that have joined tonight probably feel the same way. Um, and I think there's discussions to be had going forward. So thank you very much. It's, it's incredibly value, valuable and, uh, and insightful. And, you know, at the end of the day, all roads lead to being able to read and all these skill sets that are required to, to help our kids. Um, I think sometimes we take it for granted um, that we can read, but you forget how it actually all happened. And it's it's incredibly important more, now more than ever before, not just in South Africa, I think globally, um, that uh, the, the lethargy and the, the laziness of of reading, um, you know, it's, it's, it's taken a backseat more than ever before, but it's, I think personally, it's it's relatively easy to, to push back up the ranks in, in, in terms of something that kids want to do. And I think that's all of us have got a collaborative effort to make kids want to uh, develop that, that reading habit through love and enjoyment and, and fun. And as you say, connecting it to what is mm -hmm. out there and that that's an important part. So thank you very much for, for that. Uh, folks, any more questions, please post them in the chat box. You've got the contact details of uh, Dr. Val and of Hanley. Um, So uh, please um, let's make contact and let's make this world a better place for, for our kids. Um, Thank but you, now Chris. moving, no thanks, thanks, Anneli. Um, you know, as we say, um, you, you don't go away empty-handed tonight. That's uh, the way the webinars work, uh, folks. So tonight, uh, AG Blocks is uh, offering a discount of up to thirty percent. Um, just getting there, they're up to thirty percent on both their on-site and online products, um, as currently on display. The discount code is indicated in the top left and it is available to all first-time clients um, until the 4th of August, 2022. So hurry along and take advantage of this offer. The voucher together with their contact details is included and will also be placed into the chat box for your ease of reference. Um, in addition, kibooks.online is making available a free reading subscription, which will be valid until the 3rd of August, 2022 for you to enjoy enabling your children to explore, read and have fun with the platform. As Dr. Val pointed out, there's lots of books which you can use to help you to get your children to develop a love for reading through the various skill sets that are out there. So we encourage you to download the app, go onto the platform and access the world of books. This is uh, a takeaway. So the username and password on display when you access the platform, the username is Um, and that's as simple as that. It's also going to be in the uh, chat box. So please use it. If you've got kids, if you've got nephews and nieces, grandchildren, let them use it. Let them have fun with it. We want our kids to read. So please, here's an opportunity. It's free. It doesn't cost you a cent and you have full access to all the resources um, that are available out there. So please make use of it. Um, that's, that's what we request. I think, folks, uh, that's it. I don't think there are any more questions. Um, if there are... Uh, 
questions, we will flag them and we will di direct them to Hanley or to Dr. Val, uh, but otherwise get in contact with them. And uh, thank you very much. That's it for tonight, folks. Um, we trust you've enjoyed the series over the past six months and that you'll join us again for our final installment, sadly, in, in this series, uh, which will be encouraging our children to read. Um, it's going to be a good one with a very special guest on the evening. So make a note of it, Thursday evening, the 4th of August, same time, same place. We look forward to seeing you again until next month. Hopefully there won't be any load shedding by that time. Thanks for joining us. Stay warm and good night. <laughs>